Hello, Second City Davenport. Hope you all are doing well. Alex Reguello, Tom Lyons, a couple of your doctor pastors here. Uh, he wanted to wear white coats and a stethoscope, <laughs> uh, but I didn't have those two things, so here we are. But we're coming to you with something exciting. As maybe, maybe some of you have heard already, we are planning to go back to our normal um, gathering inside the Junior Theater this coming Sunday, um, July 5th. So what we wanted to do is get on here and just go through some um, specifics there. Uh, what we're going to be doing is going back as we transition from outside and under the tent to inside. We're going to go back to two services. So we're going to have our 8.30 a.m. service as well as our 10.30 a.m. service. Um, so we would just ask that if you are an 8.30 individual or family before uh, the shutdown and a, or a 10.30 um, individual or family that you would go to those respective services again so that we can make sure we have enough room for people. Um, but we also know that um, some of you might not want to be coming back in into the gathering, especially since we're transitioning inside. So we're going to continue the Facebook Live um, feed that you guys can, can partake in. We're also going to provide you for at with at-home liturgy um, as well as some kids' activities so they can follow along um, with what's happening there. Now, we have prayed about this, we've talked about this and thought about this a lot, and we believe that this is the right thing to do to transition inside, but we're not taking this, this transition lightly. So we want to go through some of the details because there is a lot um, that is going to be changing. So we're going to take some time here to talk about what we're doing, how we're doing it, but I would say most importantly, why we are actually doing this. So that's what I want, want to start with. At Sacred City, our mission, uh, which is to make disciples, to plant churches, and to renew our city, through the gospel of Jesus Christ that starts with a passion for the glory of God. So as Christians, as God's people, we want to be reminded of the glory of God, the weightiness of God, right? So every week when we gather together, we need to see each other, we need to hear each other, we need to interact with each other um, to remind each other of that good news of the gospel, to remind each other of the greatness of God. So we go about our weeks and we live for other things. Right? We live for things of lesser glory. So we come together on a Sunday morning and we're reminded of the greatness of God, we're reminded of the glory, the infinite glory of our Creator. So we look at, at Psalm 73, the psalmist there, the author is, is speaking of his envy um, and his, his, uh, the envy for the prosperity and the success of uh, wicked people. And he's sitting in that envy and he says it's not until he comes into the sanctuary of God, right? He gathers with other people and he comes into the presence of God. And we need that same thing even now, right? It's, it wasn't until he was reminded of the infinite glory um, of God that he had the right perspective on the lesser glory of man. So that's what we want to do. We want to come together. We want to gather together to be reminded of the greatness of God so that we can be invited into orienting our lives around him and around his mission. And so we desire to gather again a little bit more closely to the way that we um, believe is right, the way that we believe is good, the, the way that we believe is the best way to gather together as God's people. Um, and that's according to Psalm 45, right, where it says, one generation shall commend your works to another and declare your mighty acts, right? Reminding each other as we gather together on a Sunday morning of who God is and what he's done. So that's the why. We want to gather together every single week to remind each other of who God is and what he's done. But also, the tent that we've been getting is rather expensive, um, and it's starting to get extremely hot outside, right? So we don't want to be sitting under that tent in, you know, 100-degree weather if we don't have to. So we feel like this transition is the best way to go. But we also know there's probably going to be questions on that, right? So that's why we wanted to kind of invite Dr. Lyons in here um, to speak on some of the specifics from his medical expertise. So um, while he still has his pastor on, hat on, <laughs> adding his doctor hat um, to talk about some of the statistics and answer some of the questions. So if you want to chime in on that. Yeah, so we want to acknowledge that there is an increase in the virus cases coming up. Iowa's among the states that it's going up with. Um, so the timing doesn't seem to be great for moving back inside. There is probably more of a risk um, if you are meeting outside versus inside, face-to-face, -face, for you getting the virus inside than outside. There's just more circulation outside and less inside. Um, we are following our own wisdom. 
we are following medical advice, we are following um, some experts that we think are reasonable experts as opposed to social media experts that can say anything that they want. Um, and we've come up with a plan in these decisions. Part of it, we will be doing everything we can do to keep people as socially distanced as possible inside. Part of this is mandated. We are at a uh, city facility and we have to be spread out. So they have blocked out, we have to be 50% capacity. They have blocked out every other row. So we will be spread out just by necessity. Um, so that is, that's gonna help a lot. We ex there are certain general guidelines that I think are pretty easy to follow. We're gonna be washing our hands a lot. We want everybody to do that. We're gonna have the alcohol stuff available to be used, you know, washing our hands. We do that for communion every week. Uh, we're gonna continue with that. Um, if you're gonna, if, you know, coughing, sneezing, it's allergy season in Iowa, happens. Uh, they recommend using a tissue and throwing away the tissue and then washing your hands right away or coughing into your, into your elbow because that has less stuff flying everywhere. So we expect people to kind of do that. When um, you sneeze on somebody, you only sneeze on your family members. Try to sneeze on your household members because they're going to be in your stuff anyway. <laughs> um, we will continue social distancing. So in the gathering, we've kind of mandated how it's going to go. But coming in, you know, if you're in line for coffee, try to keep spaced out. If when we're leaving, if, you know, you're going to hang out with people outside, it's okay if there's, you know, there are people in the Michigan community that you're going to be around with anyway. Your, your risk is probably the same as it is anywhere else. Um, but just keep in mind, you know, there are people that probably have health conditions that you may not be aware of that would be at higher risk. So just be cautious and be, you know, caring for them. Um, can we sing? We can sing. So they have done nothing to prove that singing throws spit or whatever you want to call it any farther than just talking to people. Um, there are some concerns about it. We can't, there is no, there is no proof either way. It's good or it's bad. Um, they do say that if you had a mask on, you're, you know, it's contained inside. We get little masks. I get this, I wear this every day at work. It's annoying, but doable. I mean, it's not terrible to go to work in it. Um, so if you're concerned, you can wear a mask and that will keep you know, everything kind of just contained. It's not, I mean, this is fabric. This is not a viral shield. You know, the particle size can get through here. If you have a cross on it, though, yeah. <laughs> it locks them out. <laughs> we are promoting that as a thing, but Jesus protects us. <laughs> um, so we just want to, you know, those are options that you can have. People should feel free to sing. We want you to sing. We want you to worship. We want the spirit to come and flow through us. Um, but the same thing, we don't want to make people uncomfortable. We don't want to make people um, scared to come in. So masks are, a, are a, an option of keeping that kind of stuff under control. Um, pretty much that's, those are the, the, the big picture things. We're going to be cleaning and disinfecting in between. We're going to do it before the service. We're going to do it in between services, especially high traffic areas like the coffee. That'll be cleaned like yeah. frequently so that we're, you know, we're doing everything that we can to keep things under control. So you'd say with all the precautions that we're taking, and we're going to hit on some of those specifically in a second here, that's why we feel like it's, it's wise to be able yes. to go I into think a it's, gathering. And it, we're, we're making everything as safe as possible that we can do. That we all like the gathering. I mean, that's one of the big highlights of people's weeks. We like coming together. We like worshiping together. We like socializing together. And that takes care of all of those aspects for us. So, and we want that to continue. We just have to make a few compromises on yeah. what's good in this. In the, you know, the, the big problem with this virus is we don't know what's going to happen with it into the future. And so we are, you know, these plans that we make may change. The government may change the rules and we may have to adapt. So we're willing to do that and we're going to do that wisely and with everybody's health in the in, in the right place. So what would be a recommendation if one of our people, them or their family members or children have been exposed to Right. So what we would ask if if you are sick or if you have fevers, cough, they're coming up with lots of new symptoms, diarrhea, red eyes, 
swollen joints. There's lots of things that are being discovered about this virus that you stay home. We don't want you to be a potential source of an outbreak that would affect our, our community. Um, there are people, you know, if you are at a high risk group, and I'm going to let you decide who that is, there's, there are certain medical things that have been recommended for you if you have an immune system that is compromised from a disease process that you probably are at higher risk than the general population and we would recommend you consider staying home and using the video option we're not going to make you stay home we're going to do everything we can to protect you if you choose to come here but we're not going to judge you if you stay home because this is good for your health and your family so those we're going to leave that open um, did that answer your question? Yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> so let's kind of transition into how we're actually going to do this. And I want to just basically read these because I, I don't want to miss anything. Um, so in, in alignment with what God, with, with what God, with what Doc is saying. <laughs> Not have, that good. <laughs> we have, we've worked together with the Junior Theater to do everything that has been, that we've been directed to do by the city and by the state officials for the health and safety of our people. So Entry and exit of the Junior Theater. As you're coming into the gathering, we ask that you would enter in through the main front doors of the building and that you'd be conscious of others, practicing distancing um, as you walk into the lobby there. Try not to just sit there and be talking to people. Um, We we wanna get into the the building, enter through the lobby, go into the the, the front doors there um, as you come into the sanctuary. If you need to use the restroom or if you need to get coffee, if you need to do any of those things, we ask that you would do that as quickly as possible and then go ahead and find your seat and try not to backtrack and go back into the lobby as much as possible. But we're also not legalists, right? So if that happens, it's not like we're going to tase you or anything like that. <laughs> as you're exiting, with which the, the gathering is over, we would ask that you would exit through the side doors of the theater space um, and building. And of course, signs will be posted for these exits and, and entry um, to those doors so just be paying attention to that as far as seating and and occupancy the occupancy of the theater is limited to 50 percent from what we normally would do and that's to ensure the six feet of social distancing so how this is going to work is there's going to be a row of people that are able to sit there and then a row um, behind them or in front of them that is going to be empty that's what's going to allow the the distance to be able to happen and then all we ask then um, for our people to be intentional about is even though we're going to have those empty rows, people that are sitting next to you, we would ask that you would leave a couple of seats uh, between individuals or between families. Um, additional measures, we, there's going to, masks will be optional. We would encourage you to wear one if you, if you feel comfortable. Um, hand sanitizer dispensers can be found throughout the lobby as well as the restrooms. Hospitality volunteers will disinfect services before and after services, um, like Doc said. Communion. We ask that you would please come forward for communion as normal, like we've been doing um, in, our, in our outdoor gatherings. But we would keep distancing um, between you or your family. Um, so keep families together, keep individuals together. Communion will be served in the same prepackaged cups that we've been doing outdoors, again, for our safety. And then this is one of the more important things. So um, if you have children, I would suggest listening to this particular thing. At this time, we're planning to go back, transition back into having Sacred City Kids Ministry available. It's a partial reopening, though. We are only having kids that are five and under so that we have more space. Again, we can try our best to keep the kids distance as much as possible. All the other children, so children five and above, you would, if you're coming to one of the gatherings, they would remain with you, um, as you as you go into the sanctuary. We've made changes to the Sacred City Kids check-in system, as well as provided additional measures with the classrooms. Emily's worked hard um, with her volunteers to get this all set up. All this information is being sent directly to you if you have children, um, to the parents and volunteers, and it's also going to be linked um, to this video. In addition to kids over the age of five, if you feel comfortable keeping all of your children, so even if they're five and below, with you, we would Please do that. Please um, continue to keep them with you together um, in the gathering. Um, our services will, will still be shorter like they were outside um, so that we, we make it available for you to keep your children. Family friendly is what we want to be. I think I didn't miss anything there. Got everything on your list. Okay. Oh, no, I did miss something. Actually, probably pretty important. At the end of the service, ushers will be coming row by row and kind of ushering you out um, to exit. So we don't want just everybody getting up at the same time after that last song or after that benediction and, uh, 
and leaving at the same time, it will actually get similar to like a wedding. Um, you will be released um, by the ushers. In closing, obviously, there is a lot that we just went through, right? There's a lot of details. We want this to be, um, we want this to go well, right? We want to do our part to honor each other um, and to keep everybody safe um, at the same time as we are trying to get back to as normal as we possibly can and just gather together with each other, with God's people, um, to the glory of God. That's what we want to do. So we're hoping um, that, as Doc said, that, that we do have God's protection here, that God is over this, that this is in alignment with what he wants us to do, but we cannot guarantee your ultimate safety from, from COVID-19. So we just want to make sure that you are aware of that. If you do not feel comfortable, it's not like we are um, forcing you to come to the gathering, which is why we're still having the, the live stream. If you feel more comfortable with doing that, we would ask that you definitely um, would partake in that. If you do have questions here, we want to hear those questions. We want to connect with you. Um, so ask them. The best way to do that is to contact Ben Mosbach. Um, his email is ben at sacredcitychurch.com. He'll get your questions. He'll relay those to us, and we'll be able to respond as quickly as we possibly can. Everything that we just said is going to be sent out to you um, on through an email, weekly update email, as well as Realm, um, so you could read through it. Um, as you, you get to get as you plan to, to come to, to the Sunday gathering, hopefully. Lastly, we just want to remind you again, this is something that we have prayed about. This is something that we think is the, the right way to go, and we're excited about it. We're excited to get back to some normalcy. We're excited to get back to gathering um, back into the Junior Theater. We hope you are excited as well, um, and we look forward to seeing you guys on Sunday. See you soon.